Tonight, a high-end heist at Canada's biggest airport. $20 million worth of gold and other goods gone. Precious cargo pinched after landing at Pearson. I really don't know like who stole it and what their connections may be. An intense search for suspects. The SpaceX experiment, an epic liftoff. The booster worked and it didn't blow up on the launch pad. And the takeaway from a mid-air explosion. That's bad, but it's also great. Plus, the criminal case against Alec Baldwin is dismissed. When the new president's special prosecutors came on board, they brought fresh eyes to this. Dropping the manslaughter charges in a deadly film set shooting. CTV National News with Omar Sachedina. Good evening, everyone. Airports around the world have become tantalizing targets for thieves who have grabbed a fortune in stolen cargo over the years. And tonight, the hunt is on to track down who is behind a stunning and brazen heist at a warehouse near Toronto's Pearson, where $20 million worth of gold and other valuables vanished. CTV's Heather Wright starts us off. The plane landed at Toronto's Pearson Airport Monday night. Police won't say where it came from or where it was heading, but confirm that on board that flight was a container full of gold and other valuable items. Once this cargo was offloaded at a holding facility, subsequent to its arrival, this high value container was uh, removed by illegal means from the holding facility. Who took it and how, all part of the investigation being led by Peel Regional Police. Officers estimate the size of the container was roughly five or six square feet, so likely would have been difficult to move. Police wouldn't speculate on whether this heist was an inside job or if organized crime may have been involved. We're looking at all angles on how this item was stolen, so I don't really have a lot of details on how it was stolen to provide or any suspect. While airport heists are not common, they do happen. In 2020, six people, including airport workers, were busted for stealing more than $6 million worth of designer goods at New York's JFK using tractor trailers. The year before that, a group of armed men in Brazil stole $30 million worth of gold and other precious metals from Sao Paulo's airport. And in 2013, thieves posing as police officers cut through a fence in Brussels, stealing diamonds worth $50 million. To this day, only a small amount of the loot has been recovered. Police stress today they believe this is an isolated incident and there's no threat to people traveling through Pearson Airport. They're now combing through surveillance video, trying to determine how thieves were able to make off with such valuable cargo. Omar. So many questions. All right, Heather, thank you. Prosecutors dropped criminal charges against actor Alec Baldwin today. The Emmy Award winner was set to go on trial in less than two weeks for the fatal shooting of a cinematographer killed by a prop gun on a film set. CTV's Joy Malbin on the reversal. Filming on the Western movie Rust was about to resume in Montana. Alec Baldwin was back on set when the star and producer was suddenly vindicated. New prosecutors dropped the involuntary manslaughter charges against the actor in the tragic shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins 18 months ago. This has been a bit of a train wreck for the Santa Fe DA. When the new president's special prosecutors came on board, they brought fresh eyes to this. From what our sources tell us, they viewed some of the evidence as needing a severe relook, to put it politely. Baldwin was holding the prop gun when it discharged a live round during rehearsal. He pleaded not guilty, insisting over and over again. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. You never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. never. That was the training that I had. You don't point a gun at me and, and pull the trigger at in a statement, Baldwin's lawyers welcomed the decision, saying, we encourage a proper investigation into the facts and circumstances of this tragic accident. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who supervised the weapons on set, still faces charges, and as part of the wrongful death suit against Baldwin and the production company, Hutchins' husband was made executive producer of the resurrected movie. So is the actor out of legal jeopardy? They could bring back charges. Whether or not they're going to bring back an involuntary manslaughter charge, very unlikely. 
Prosecutors are still digging into the evidence as the case moves forward with a preliminary hearing for Gutierrez Reed two weeks from now. Omar. All right, Joy, thank you. Within minutes, a highly anticipated rocket launch today went from blast off to bust. But as CTV's John Venavelli Rao reports, it's being called a successful setback. For space enthusiasts, it was a moment to savor. The tallest and most powerful rocket ever built, finally lifting off from a launch pad in Texas and drawing a huge crowd there to witness history. What a sight from the green cameras at Starbase. As SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy Booster raced skyward on an uncrewed test flight. Onboard view from Starship. Climbing high over the Gulf of Mexico, a rocket almost twice as powerful as the one that sent astronauts to the moon. Oh, man. Some of its 33 engines, though, did not work. Beginning the flip for stage separation. The rocket then started to tumble. Its upper stage failed to separate. Yeah, it does appear to be spinning. And as it veered off course, SpaceX decided to blow it all up. Uh, Still, there were cheers because some didn't even think the rocket would get off the ground. We cleared the tower, which honestly was our only hope. <laughs> <laughs> and the company, not at all considering it a failure, getting almost four minutes of flight. Today, they got a lot further than I thought they were going to. So huge congratulations. The blast off was so explosive, video shows debris being flung around near the launch site. SpaceX and its boss, Elon Musk, have visions of using Starship to go back and forth to the moon and then Mars, with NASA counting on it to land astronauts on the lunar surface in just a few years. Space is hard. And they'll overcome this, and we'll be on the way, and we'll be landing uh, on the moon late 25, early 26. SpaceX has seen plenty of failures before, but is known for learning from its mistakes. If you're aggressive and you, you, know, you, you are moving quickly, you're going to have these kinds of accidents, and you're going to learn from them, and that's going to help you develop your vehicle more quickly. And SpaceX says it's already ambitiously looking towards a second launch attempt in just a few months. Omar. All right, John, thanks. Another B.C. First Nation revealed the traumatic discovery near the grounds of the former St. Augustine Residential School in Seashell, British Columbia, which closed in 1975. Forty unmarked children's graves. Shallow graves. Only large enough for the young bodies to lay in the fetal position. Searchers used ground-penetrating radar as well as interviews with survivors and historical records. We are learning tonight about the massive price tag that convinced Volkswagen to build a huge new factory in Canada. $13 billion in taxpayer money will go to the company, but Ottawa says the investments will pay off in just a few years. Here's CTV's senior political correspondent, Glenn McGregor. An empty field in southwestern Ontario will soon become a plant the size of more than 300 football fields, thanks to one of the largest subsidies to a single company in Canadian history to build the gigafactory that makes batteries for Volkswagen electric vehicles. The federal government will put up at least $13 billion over the next 10 years. The investment needed to woo the German automaker away from the U.S. and its massive funding offered under the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act. To the federal government, it's a huge win. This, in terms of output for the country, you're talking about not thousands of jobs, you're talking about tens of thousands. This is the first time we are tracking a, a car manufacturer in 35 years. This is the first time ever we attract a European car manufacturer in Canada. The industry minister had been negotiating the deal with Volkswagen officials for months. He says the plant will generate between 100 and 200 billion dollars in economic activity. The payback is five years. That's a very good investment. Talk to any banker, he would say, if you get your money in five years for a plan that's going to be there for 100 years, that's a pretty good deal for Canadians. The deal is a come from behind victory for St. Thomas, Ontario, devastated when thousands lost their jobs in 2010 when Ford shut down its factory. The batteries they'll make to be shipped to a plant in Tennessee for use in Volkswagen EV SUVs. If we didn't get this investment and the announcement for Volkswagen was in Michigan tomorrow, we'd probably be saying, what happened to Canada? Uh, where did we go wrong? There will be more costs for governments ahead, building the roads and other infrastructure to bring critical minerals and other materials to the factory, and potentially more subsidies still to come as the government hopes to lure other investments from automakers like Stellantis. 
The funding will be formally announced at an event in St. Thomas tomorrow, with Premier Doug Ford joining the Prime Minister and other officials, revealing how much the Ontario government will also contribute. Omar. All right, Glenn McGregor in Ottawa tonight. Canada's National Soccer Association announced another major leadership change today, revealing in a statement it has mutually agreed to part ways with General Secretary Earl Cochrane. Cochrane has helped lead the sports governing body since last July. In February, Nick Bontis, Canada Soccer's president, also resigned. Public service workers remain off the job for a second day in one of the largest strikes of its kind. The most immediate impact is on travelers who can't get new passports, even if they have a trip booked. Here's CTV's Judy Trin on the uncertainty. You gotta raise me one, one, two. When one third of the federal public service walks out, the pain is felt immediately in government services. Without staff to process passports, some Canadians are being forced to put travel plans on hold. I was talking to my boyfriend and he wanted to travel with me because I have a little bit of benefits I can take him, but uh, he won't be able to renew his passport so we won't be able to go anywhere. My other family members need to renew it. He's like, please don't come back until the labor, labor dispute's over. We, we're not accepting any more passports. I don't know. The government is only processing passports in emergency cases, such as for medical needs or for visits to critically ill relatives. The delays harken back to last summer. That's when pandemic travel restrictions loosened and the demand caught the government off guard. Canadians waited in line for hours, only to be told they had to wait months for documents to arrive. To fix it, the government doubled its passport staff and improved online services. The good news is, is that we're in a much better position this time this year than we were last year. There's a lot more capacity in the system. No! Solidarity! The union wants at least a 13.5% wage increase over three years, while the government is offering nine. Once we're properly compensated, we could properly service the people that need the, our services. But the picket lines have brought back uncomfortable deja vu. Public sector strike. The opposition keeps pointing out. Even before the strike, these liberals were breaking records, creating massive backlogs at passport offices, Service Canada, airports and immigration. The government says it's still at the negotiating table. We don't know how close they are to reaching a deal. But Omar, with each passing day, the backlog grows. All right, Judy, thank you. New details tonight in a defamation case by a former Liberal MP against Global News. Lawyers for Handong filed a statement of claim today, seeking $15 million in damages for libel. Dong left the Liberal caucus after Global reported he had spoken to a Chinese diplomat about delaying the release of two Canadians detained by Beijing. Global has said it is governed by a, quote, rigorous set of journalistic principles and practices. Hundreds of police from across Canada lined up today for a regimental funeral to bid farewell to one of their own. Satnam Shri Vahigurji Thothakur Tum Pahir Da. RCMP Constable Harvinder Singh Dhami died in a crash while on duty 10 days ago. The 32-year-old was driving to assist other officers in a noise complaint. Harv, as he was called at home, was passionate about community service. It was an absolute honor being your wife. I love you, Mary John. New details tonight in the case of a suspected serial rapist near Calgary. A search warrant reveals chilling details about what police expected to find. Here's CTV's Alberta Bureau Chief Bill Fortier. A close look at the property raided by police and searched for five days last week shows the mess left behind. Inside a large building being rented by the suspect, a trailer where it appears he was living. 59-year-old Richard Mantha faces 16 charges. It's alleged he abducted at least three sex trade workers in Calgary over a 15-month period, took them back to the rural property, then assaulted and sexually assaulted them. Investigators say at least two of them were drugged, and police say there may be more victims. A search warrant viewed by CTV News shows police believe they would find a gun, a pig mask, bodily substances including blood and DNA, drugs, and human remains, evidence that was expected to support a charge of indignity to a human body. It's used when a body is handled improperly after death, 
but that charge has not been laid. What does that suggest to you? That suggests to me that they didn't find the human remains, that they obviously had reasonable grounds or reasonable suspicion to get in that search warrant to think, think that they were there. Police have not specified what they did find, but say thousands of pieces of evidence were seized. It's overwhelming for sure. The couple that owns the property Mantha was renting part of is still reeling as more details of what police suspected are revealed. When I think too much about it, I start freaking out. But now that I know all that, I'm scared every single day. Richard Mantha appeared briefly in court today over CCTV. His lawyer scheduled a bail hearing for May 12th. Omar. All right, Bill, thanks. The intense manhunt for the suspect in the shootings of a six-year-old girl and her parents in North Carolina is over after he turned himself in. Neighbors say the girl was shot after a group of kids went to get a basketball that had rolled into the suspect's yard. Her cheek was struck by bullet fragments. Why did you shoot my daddy and me? Daddy shoot a kid's dad. Her father is recovering after being shot in the back. Her mother was also glazed by a bullet. Coming up after the break. She had barely opened her mouth to say ah, and the doctor was like, that's strep. The concerning rise of a common bug, plus the risk on the roads after a wintry blast. A spring snowstorm in Saskatchewan triggered travel chaos on the roads today and more than 50 crash-related police calls in an hour. The driver of this coach was seriously injured when the bus slammed into a transport trailer. He was trapped and passengers had to escape from the roof. Dozens more semis were trapped at truck stops when highways closed because of the poor conditions and accidents. Many remain off limits. And as that wintry weather persists, so is the surge in strep infections. CTV's Heather Butts on the different types and the trends in Canada. At a time when the season for strep infections should be winding down, it's not, leaving many, including five-year-old Charlotte, battling the bug. She was complaining of her, of her throat. She was saying, it, you know, it hurts when I swallow, it hurts when I swallow. Emily McCrone headed for the doctor's office. She had barely opened her mouth to say, ah, and the doctor was like, that's strep? Like... She needs to be on medication like ASAP. It's a very common bacteria. 10 to 30 percent of people can carry group A strep and show no symptoms, while others develop a mild or severe illness. The non-invasive, like, like strep throat and skin infections, and the invasive, which is like the bloodstream infections and the flesh disease, the collective burden of group A strep is definitely high and higher than in previous uh, years. The more severe invasive strep is up nearly 50% in some provinces from pre-pandemic years. Quebec has tallied more than 340 cases this season, while Ontario has seen more than 700. In Ontario, nearly 80% of cases led to hospitalization and in some rare instances, death. Health Canada says there is no sign of a new strain of the disease. It could be, uh, you know, respiratory viruses are increasing and therefore they contribute to the increase in group A strep. And it could also be because uh, of COVID, we've had less group A strep in, two, in the last two or three years. And that itself has less to, uh, led to less priming of the immune system of a population. The Trajani kids have each had it three times in the last two months. We were told it was like a ping pong. So we had to f figure out a way to like not let it get back to the other one when the other one was done. The typical season for strep runs November to April, but doctors aren't sure how long this cycle will last. They say serious cases are rare. There is no need to panic. Heather Butts, CTV News, Toronto. Still ahead. Do we have a seat for two right now? The caller who had no idea he was booking a table with a prince. Shock and condolences from fans across the world at the sudden death of K-pop star Moon Bin. The 25-year-old singer was found dead in his home in Seoul on Wednesday. And while the cause is unknown, police say there are no signs of foul play. The family of Michael Schumacher says it's planning legal action against a German tabloid after it published a fake interview. 
turns out it was generated by artificial intelligence and detailed quotes of the former race car driver's accident in 2013 and recovery. The tabloid claimed it was his first interview since that accident. An unsuspecting caller to a UK restaurant was in for a surprise today when Prince William answered the phone. <laughs> William and Kate were visiting a family-run restaurant in Birmingham when he decided to help out with a reservation. You're going to train at three, okay. Um, I think you could probably get in at half past two, that'd be fine. For two people? Maybe quarter past two, you can make it, you know, make the train at three? Yeah. Quarter past two, what name is it under? We see you at quarter past two. Okay. Your name is? Bye-bye. <laughs> William's office later tweeted that he hoped he told the customer to come to the right place. The customer did get there on time, telling the BBC that while he didn't recognize the prince's voice, it was pretty amazing and quite the surprise. That's pretty neat. After the break, the stellar solar experience down under. A group of dedicated stargazers descended on a remote Australian resort town today to capture one of the most spectacular sights this decade when a rare celestial event turned day into night. CTV's Melanie Nagy explains. The Australian coastal community of Exmouth is home to fewer than 3,000 people, but today the tiny town's population exploded as hordes of eclipse hunters gathered nearby. It's the three most significant planetary bodies for our existence going into perfect alignment. They set up camp in a dusty field and came armed with fancy cameras as well as special glasses. All of it so they could experience firsthand a rare hybrid solar eclipse. This spectacular event of the, the, the moon moving in front of the sun to cause an eclipse. Oh my God. About midday, it started to get dark, and as it did, people turned their gaze towards the sky. For the first time in nearly 10 years, the moon passed between the Earth and Sun in such a way that it shifted between a total and annular eclipse. In response, there were cheers <laughs> and even tears, <laughs> not only in Australia, but in Indonesia and East Timor, where the intriguing celestial event could also be seen. Someone turned the lights out and turned them back on again. How good was that? The spectacular eclipse only lasted about 60 seconds. It, you know, it's only a minute long, but it really felt like a long time. But judging by the excitement in Exmouth, oh, wow. The memories will last a lifetime. It's my second one. I hope I'm still around for the third one. <laughs> As for when that will be, the next one isn't until 2031. Melanie Nagy, CTV News, Vancouver. Incredible. And that's a snapshot of this Thursday. To all Muslims celebrating, we wish you and your families a joyous Eid al-Fitr. Good night.